The Payout, written by Dave Haddock. I'm dead. I'm dead. The words repeated on a loop in Sully Kanata's head as he raced through the winding tunnels of the abandoned factory. Focused columns of heat blasted from the vents staggered along the wall, pumping acrid smoke into the tight passageway. A series of desperate shots boomed behind him. It sounded like the hand cannon Jens was known to carry. Sully guessed he was digging in. Better him than me, Sully thought. The rip of gunfire was suddenly silenced by a chorus of high-speed energy weapons, bringing back those words again. I'm dead. I'm dead. Sully cut around a corner. His feet skidded on a puddle of something and nearly came out from under him. He managed to catch one of the pipes on the wall, righted himself and raced forwards. He'd scouted the factory before the drop, a habit he'd picked up in the past year or two, but now he was just trying to keep the terror at bay so he could remember the winding layout that led to... The access door came into view ahead of him. He pushed even harder and shoved his full weight into the metal. It flung open. Sully quickly slammed it behind him and jammed a piece of metal shrapnel into the door lock, hoping it had slowed down his pursuers. Thin metal stairs wound up around the walls. He wasted no time, leaping two, three steps at once, even though his legs burned. By the time he hit the top, somebody crashed into the door he came through. His improvised lock held. Sully quickly pulled on his gloves and hood as heavy impacts rammed against the door below. By the time he'd gotten the goggles on, the door downstairs buckled. Heavy footsteps thudded up the stairs. Sully wrenched the handle and pushed the heavy rusted door at the top of the stairs open. A swirl of dirt and dust blew into the factory. He could already feel the dull burn of the dirt through the fabric. He slipped out the door and hustled away. The drop had been on the outskirts of Lawville, Factories out here were either automated or had outlived their usefulness. They were also within walking distance of residential areas, so it made for a convenient place to meet. Sully cut into a winding alleyway to keep out of sight. He weaved his way around piles of trash, leaving oddly coloured fluids as he made his way towards the more populated areas. Over the wind, he could start to hear the oddly placid music intended to keep the populace calm, meaning he was close. Although he strained to hear the armoured footsteps of his pursuers through the howling wind, he knew he wouldn't hear any voices. It was one of the most unsettling things about executive security. They only turned on their external speakers if they were addressing you directly. The rest of the time, they were completely silent. Their sealed heavy armour obscured all the conversations they were undoubtedly having. Up ahead, a trickle of people passed the mouth of the alley. Sully slowed as he approached and glanced around the street. He was in one of the commercial sectors, placed near a travel hub, so workers could pick up any last-minute items on their way to the factories. Sully hadn't realised how pathetic these stores were until he'd gotten off-world. The shelves in all of them were mostly bare, only displaying a handful of sanctioned items that Hurston imported. The storefronts themselves, although they had colourful names, all bore the same Owned and Operated by Hurston Dynamics Inc. disclaimer on the sign. Almost everybody was dressed in similar clothes, wrapping up in multiple layers to protect against the corrosive dirt. Almost no one looked up, every gaze locked on the ground ahead. Carla had always said it was the mindset of the people here. Keep your head down, focus on the path right in front of you. She'd always been more pragmatic than Sully. At least, that was how she'd described herself. He thought it was the mindset of the broken. That was why Sully had to leave. He kept his head down while passing a camera cluster perched above. A dozen or so lenses were aimed to spy on the entire street. Speakers embedded among them pumped out that obnoxious music. He passed underneath and slowly trudged his way up to the monorail station. At the top, Sully glanced back towards the alley. There was no sign of his pursuers. The only security were in an enclosed observation post perched above the checkpoint. Sully queued up and waited. When his turn came, he stepped into the small antechamber. The laminate doors swung closed as he scanned his card. A moment later, the screen flashed green and the plexi doors in front opened. A monorail was just pulling into the station. Sully filed into the train with the other workers. Focused pneumatic tubes fired bursts of air as each person stepped through the door of the monorail, blasting dust and dirt from their clothes. It was part of a public health initiative that Hurston Dynamics had unveiled ten years ago, but like everything else from Hurston, nobody ever took it seriously. Sully slid into a seat. As the adrenaline wore off, his legs started to burn, but Sully couldn't think about that now. He had to figure out what went so wrong.
This was hardly the first time Sully had made a run to Lawville. Ever since he linked up with Peng's gang five years ago, he'd done a handful of smuggling jobs here. As much as he despised coming back to this hellhole, the black market mostly sold stuff easily gotten off world. You could buy a pair of DMC pants anywhere and sell it for four, sometimes five times the price here. Only tricky part, you had to get it past security. And that's what this job was. A breeze up running a bunch of clothes and food that nobody would look twice at anywhere else in the UEE. Once he landed, he contacted Shaw, his guy on the inside, who rerouted the specialty cargo past the customs check and put them on a freight to the factories. Once the customs check on the rest of Sully's cargo had been cleared, he met up with Jens and made the deal. Everything had gone as it always had, healthy amounts of paranoia, but otherwise, respect. Jens had two of his usual enforcers there to help carry the crates. He cracked open the third crate, but instead of hydroponic growth supplements, it was jars and jars of widow. Jens turned to Sully. What the hell is this? Sully was dumbfounded. He barely heard the question. I, I don't, he managed to stammer. A dozen energy weapons hummed to life above them. Jens, his enforcers and Sully turned to see Hurst and security lining the catwalk above, rifles already aimed. Afternoon, gentlemen, an augmented voice cut through the silence. Sully turned to see a form step from the hallway. The armour had officer markings on it. I'll be honest, the thing that usually bothers me the most is that while people are spending their day being productive, contributing to the betterment of the world by putting in their 12 hours and going home, you types try to make more money for less work. The security officer calmly circled Jens and Sully. Jens and forces kept glancing at the security up top, while Jens locked eyes with the officer as he stepped over to the crate of Widow. But this, he said, as he lifted a jar of the thick black liquid, poisoning our populace with this junk. Well, that I just can't stand for. We, Sully started to speak when the officer backhanded him. The armour augmented the hit, sending Sully sliding across the dirty floor. Jen's hand slowly drifted behind his back. The officer unlatched his helmet and pulled it off. He was older, probably late sixties, tan weathered skin and cold grey eyes. He walked towards Sully and leaned down. I didn't say you could speak, the officer said. What's this going to cost, Jens muttered. The security officer paused, eyes still locked on Sully, then smiled. What? I pay out to you boots every month, but it ain't never enough. Seems there's always someone else who wants a little slice of the action. Jens glanced around, seemingly bored with this whole interaction. So what's it going to be this time? I want the name of everyone you pay out to, the officer said as he turned back to Jens. Sully glanced around. There was a side door, maybe four, five metres away. Yeah, sure, got a list right here. Jens yanked a holdout pistol from his waistband and opened fire. His enforcers dove for their rifles. The officer brought up his armoured hand just in time to stop Jens' shots. Let's do this the hard way then, the officer said with a grin and calmly drew his sidearm. Jens drew his heavy ballistic. That's when Sully ran. The monorail lurched to a stop. The droll voice announced the services and alternate rail lines that were available at the station. Sully had one more to go before the pads where his ship was parked. He went over every step of the job. The cargo was prepped on New Babbage like usual. Peng had made the delivery, but he wasn't the type of guy to mess with drugs. Peng was an opportunist who liked getting paid. He liked to play things safe rather than chase the rush of pushing boundaries. Running that kind of weight into Lawville was a death wish kind of deal. Sully leaned against the window as the monorail passed into shadow. He looked up to see the monolithic Hurston Dynamics building blocking out the sun. Unfortunately for him, to get the hell out of here, he'd have to go into the heart of corporate security. The train began to slow as it approached the next stop. Sally got up and joined the other passengers clustered by the door. Striding through the monorail station, he brought up his Moby and pushed a comm to Peng. Hey, what's up? Peng murmured as he appeared on the comm a moment later, clearly woken from a nap. One sec, Sally said, and headed for a crowd of people to hide his conversation from the cameras. What the hell did you have me transport? What do you mean, man? One of the crates, Sally dropped his voice to hide it from the people around him. One of them was loaded with damn widow. Quit playing, man. Do I look like I'm playing? The crowd around Sully started to move, so he kept pace. Not only that, security were all over the drop, 
Jens is dead, probably. That woke Peng up. Whoa, hold up. I don't know anything about no goddamn widow, man. Then how'd it get into the crate? Hell if I know, Peng started getting really nervous. You ever lose sight of the cargo? No, man, it was... Sully paused. There was a gap when it was out of his sight. Sure. His contact on the pads who slipped it past customs. Hey, look, you, uh, you need to get the hell out of there. Yeah, thanks, Peng. What do you think I'm doing? Yeah, right. Anyway, don't contact me till you're clear. Peng dropped the com. Sully muttered to himself and broke from the crowd to head towards the pad. He knew Peng was probably cleaning house, deleting any records of Sully from his com, data pads, whatever, playing it safe again. Sully stepped inside Archimedes' flight and glanced around. Pilots were clustered around the various terminals, trying to order their ships to get the hell out of there. Cameras covered every square inch of the space. He scanned the faces of the employees and found Michael Shaw staring vacantly into space as some customer in an ill-fitted flight suit yammered at him. Sully quickly made his way over and stepped behind the customer. It's important that my ship is kept covered, the customer droned on. I've read extensively about the atmospheric conditions here and I will not have my hull tarnished by whatever's floating around in the air. It took a few moments before Shaw noticed him standing there. When he did, he turned to the customer. Go away. The customer stopped speaking, utterly shocked. Shaw's expression hadn't changed. He just stared at the customer until he moved away, then turned to Sully. Hi, welcome to Archimedes' flight, Shaw said in an unconvincingly chipper tone. How can I help you? Yeah, I seem to have some difficulty with my cargo. Sorry to hear that. We do our best to make sure that our clients are satisfied, but sometimes accidents do happen. Sully leaned in close. We need to talk. I'm sorry, I can't do that at the moment, Shaw replied with a placid smile. He then typed something on his data pad. I've updated your hangar file with some relevant info. Thanks. Sully turned and walked away. Once outside, his Moby pinged. There was a message from an unregistered user that simply said, Bay 4, 10 minutes. A pair of ships, marked with Hurston Security Livery, blasted overhead towards the factory district where Sully had come from. This was not good. Little Nord Riding Hood was on her way to Grandma's house. Upon arriving at her house, she called, Grandma, are you home? Yes, dear. I'm on my laptop in bed. Upon seeing her grandma, she exclaimed, Oh, Grandma, what long fingers you have. Oh, the better to browse the internet, my dear. Oh, Grandma, what powerful VPN protection you have. Oh, the better to browse safely, my dear. Oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have. Oh, the better to enjoy my greater access to the sites I want to visit, my dear. But seriously, get NordVPN or I will eat you. The moral of this story is that there are some great deals on NordVPN, and using it can improve your internet privacy, safety, and give you more access to the content you want to see. Get it from the links below. Every month we have a ship giveaway for April 2023. It's for a Drake Vulture, the light salvage ship. This will enable you to take to the stars, find wrecks, and strip them as well as craft some useful items with its onboard dispensary. It comes with lifetime insurance and a Star Citizen game package as well, all you need to get into the game, and all you have to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during April. Also, please bear in mind that there are scammers about in YouTube. If you see in the comments below someone trying to get you to go onto Telegram, or someone not using my main account, which is the account I'm making videos on now, then they are a scammer pretending to be me or someone else and just be safe on YouTubes. If you would like to further support the channel, please consider subscribing. You can become a Patreon. You can use the YouTube join button as well. That goes an extra mile to help support us and enables us to produce Star Citizen content every day. And that's down to you guys helping support us. So genuinely, thank you from the bottom of my little board gamer heart.